All right, this is week four. So tonight we'll be doing the two sample hypothesis tests. I'm Ramya, I'm the IT coach. Um, I've been in SNHU for over a year. I have been conducting these workshops uh, for over a year now. Um, some of my hobbies are to cook, to hike, and to paint. So tonight's workshop, we are going to be doing the two sample hypothesis tests for population means and for population proportions. Okay, this is just um, a diagram to show the hypothesis test. So we did the one sample last week. We did the Z test and the T test. So this week, we are going to be doing, doing the two sample hypothesis tests, again, the Z and the T. The t-test is of two types, the paired and unpaired. And we will see examples from each of these tonight. All right, so the two-sample hypothesis test involves studying the differences between two populations. So the standard error and the test statistic will be different from what we have known so far. So because we have two different populations, the standard error is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares of the two standard errors. And the test statistic will be the observed difference minus hypothesized difference over the standard error. So usually the hypothesized difference is zero because the null hypothesis will say that there is no difference in the two populations. So the hypothesized difference will be zero. We will have just the observed difference. So let's do the two sample Z test for population means. Here are the steps. So we set the null and the alternate hypothesis. We determine if it's a left, right, or two-tailed test. Then note the significance level. And then calculate the test statistic. So the formula is z equals x1 bar minus x2 bar minus 0, where x1 bar is the mean of, from the first sample, x2 bar is the mean from the second sample, and 0 is the hypothesized difference. So this goes over the square root of the standard error, which is sigma 1 squared over n1 plus sigma 2 squared over n2. Sigma 1 and Sigma 2 are the population standard deviations. And N1 and N2 are the sample size. Then we find P using Python. So we can combine these two steps, steps 4 and 5, by using print z test x1 comma x2 comma value equals 0, where x1 and x2 are two arrays which have um, some values. Then we compare the p to alpha, and then determine whether to reject or not reject the null. And then, of course, the conclusion. So here is an example Python code. So from statsmodels.stats.weightstats, we import z-test, import pandas as pd. We have two samples here, sample 1 and sample 2, which are two lists having uh, values. And then we do print z-test x1 equals sample 1, x2 equals sample 2. The value is equal to 0, so we sometimes we just don't write it. So the output is below. So this will give you the test statistic and the p-value. All right, here we come to our candle example. So the mean burn time of two brands of 11-ounce candles are compared for by a home safety magazine. The burn times of 100 candles of each brand are measured. The results are given in the table below. Does sufficient evidence exist 
supporting the claim that the mean burn time of candle 1 is greater than the mean burn time of candle 2 at alpha equals 0 0.05 significance level. So our first step is to set the null and alternate hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is that there is no difference in the mean burn time of um, both types or both brands of candles. So mu1 is equal to mu2. The alternate hypothesis is mu1 greater than mu2 because in the question it says, does sufficient evidence exist supporting the claim that the mean burn time of can candle 1 is greater than the mean burn time of candle 2? So if mu1 is the mean burn time of candle 1, then my alternate hypothesis would be mu1 greater than mu2. And this is a right tail test. So the next step is to note the significance level. Alpha is given 0 0.05. And then we calculate the test statistic. So if we plug in the values, so the mean burn time of candle 1 is 27.5 hours. For 2, uh, it is 26 hours. And then the population standard deviation for candle 1 is 2.5. And for candle 2 is 3.5. So if we plug in the values, our test statistic value is 3.487. <clears throat> Does it make sense so far? All right. Next is to yeah, we need to find the p value. So we use print st.norm.sf. We plug in the values. So the z statistic value is 3.487, mean of 0, standard deviation of 1. And we get the p-value as 0 0.000. I've gone only up to three places. It's I think there are more digits, but beyond three, it's just so small. So we say p is almost equal to zero. Whenever you have a z statistic value that goes beyond three, like 3.4, 3.5, or anything greater than that. Sometimes you might get values like 4 point something or 5 point something. You can expect your p-value to be very, very small, almost equal to 0. So you will see this in some places in Zy books, uh, where when you're calculating the p, it will come out to be 0. And you'll be wondering, where did I go wrong? Why, why is my answer 0? But it's just that when the z-value becomes larger or goes more than 3, you can expect a p-value to be very, very small. So here, a p-value is almost 0, and alpha is 0 0.05. So we compare the p to alpha. Since p is smaller than alpha, we need to reject an null hypothesis. So we reject the null, and the conclusion is that sufficient evidence exists supporting the claim that the mean burn time of candle 1 is greater than the mean burn time of candle 2. So which part of this problem did not make sense? Is there anything that you want me to repeat? Anything you want me to go over? I know some of you said that. Um, this from Zybooks uh, was confusing. value it's I don't think there is a formula to do the p-value by hand for this course you would have to use Python but there are other ways to find the p-value um, 
like if you're using some other uh, statistical software we can find the p-value there are websites which let you find uh, you put in the z-value and then you get the p but for this course um, we need to use Python and I think there are other courses where they use StatCrunch or um, maybe even Excel um, where you can find a p-value but I would suggest using Python oh okay try it out try it in Trinket uh, with whatever answers you, you are getting um, put, in, put in the values for the test statistic in the Python code and try it out in Trinket see what you get All right. Now it's your turn to try one. So the Best Batteries is a battery manufacturing company who claim that their batteries last longer than any other company's batteries. A study was conducted to determine if the AA batteries of Best Batteries lasted longer than Supercell company's batteries. Both band batteries were tested on the same devices, which is wall clocks, the results are given below. Does sufficient evidence exist to support the claim that best batteries batteries last more than supercells at alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance? So here um, is the table. So the sample size is 10 for each. The mean time that the batteries last is 13.5 for best batteries and for supercell it's 12.5 population standard deviation is 1.01 .01 for best batteries and for supercell it's 1.36 so I would like you to try this out try writing out the null hypothesis and then the alternate hypothesis and then determine whether this is a left-tailed right-tailed or two-tailed test Feel free to share your answers. So the null is that there is no difference um, in the number of hours that the batteries last. So mu1 is equal to mu2. The alternate is mu1 greater than mu2. So this is going to be a right tail test. Our significance level is 0 0.05. So the test statistic value that I got is 1.867. So x1 bar and x2 bar, sorry, I want to go back. So x1 bar is 13.5, x2 bar is 12.5, and sigma 1 is 1.01, .01 and sigma 2 is 1.36. So plugging in the values, we get the test statistic value of 1.867. So next we have to find P. So we do sd.norm.sf 1.867 comma 0 comma 1 and the P value is 0 0.0309.
So the next step is to compare the P to alpha. So P is less than alpha. So we reject the null hypothesis. And we conclude that there is sufficient evidence to prove that best batteries last longer than supercell batteries. So you can see the two sample hypothesis test is very similar to the one sample. What differs is the way we write the null hypothesis, the alternate hypothesis. Other than that, the rest of the steps, the formula of course is different for the test statistic. But other than that, the way you find the p-value and after that comparing it to alpha and making a conclusion uh, is very similar to one sample hypothesis test. Any questions? All right, next is the two sample t tests. So there are two types of t tests the paired and the unpaired. So an example of the paired test is measuring glucose concentration in diabetic patients before and after an insulin injection. So here you can see in the diagram below, you have one population of diabetic patients and we get a sample and we measure their glucose concentration before and after their insulin shots. So the study is done on the same sample. So it's usually before and after a particular treatment. In the unpaired test, the example is measuring glucose concentrations in diabetic patients versus non-diabetic patients. So here we have two different populations. One is diabetic and the other one is not. And we get our samples from these two populations. So our samples are different. And the study is conducted on two different samples rather than the same sample. So in a paired test, it's the same sample. And in an unpaired test, you will have two different samples. So here is the same thing in uh, a table. So a paired test survey is conducted on one sample taken from a population. The observed data are from the same sample usually taken before and after a treatment. The same sample is measured twice. Again, the same example, measuring glucose concentration in diabetic patients before and after insulin injection. And the size of the groups here stays the same because it's the same sample that we are studying. For the unpaired t-test, survey is conducted on two independent samples. The observed data is from two different samples taken from two different or independent populations. For example, measuring glucose concentrations in diabetic patients versus non-diabetic patients. Here, the size of the two groups could be different. So the Python code for paired and unpaired tests. So the paired t-test, we use st.ttest underscore rel. That takes two arrays, x and y. The unpaired, te unpaired test, we do st.ttest underscore ind. In parentheses, two arrays, x and y. So the paired and unpaired tests yield the test statistic and the two-tailed p-value. So here is a small exercise to find out whether a test is a paired or unpaired. Studying the height difference between right-handed and left-handed students in a school. 
do you think this would be a paired test or an unpaired test? All right. That's correct. It's unpaired because we are studying two different populations. Next one, studying the change in flexibility of the same set of patients before and after going through a fitness program. Right, great. So that's the paired test. Okay, let's do an example. In the exam scores data set, four exam scores of the same 50 students are recorded. The teacher believes that student exam scores improved between exam 1 and exam 2. Does statistically significant evidence exist to support the teacher's belief at the alpha equals 0 0.05 significance level? Use the output below to answer the question. So they give you the test statistic and the p-value. So all we have to do is make use of the p-value, compare it to alpha, and then draw our conclusion. So this is a paired test. So your null hypothesis would be mu1 equals mu2. We are saying there is no change in the exam scores. Alternate hypothesis, mu1 less than mu2 because uh, the belief is that the scores improved between exam 1 and exam 2. So this is a left tail test. Doesn't want to move. All right, the p-value is given to be 0 0.1625. The p-value given in the question is the two-tailed p-value. Because our problem is a one-tailed problem, we have to get the one-tailed p-value. And so we would divide the p-value by 2 to get the one-tailed p-value. Okay, let me quickly go back to answer your question, why is this a left tail test? Because here we are saying that mu1 is less than mu2. So mu1 is the mean of exam 1 and mu2 is the mean of exam 2. And the claim is that exam 2 there was an improvement over exam 1. So the mean of exam 2 would be greater than the mean of exam 1. And because we're doing mu1 less than mu2, we call it a left tail test. So in your alternate hypothesis, whenever your first mean value is less than another value, we call that a left tail test. And another way of remembering it is to see the sign in between the two mu's. Uh, it looks like an arrowhead that's pointing to the left. So we call that a left tail test. That's just an easy way to remember. All right, so from the two-tailed p-value, we get the one-tailed p-value by dividing it by two. So then you want to compare that to alpha. So 0 0.0812 is greater than 0 0.05. So p is greater than alpha, so we do not reject the null. And our conclusion is that insufficient statistical evidence exists to support the teacher's claim that students showed improvement between exam 1 and exam 2. Any questions?
Yep. Don't know why Adobe does this. It doesn't want to move. Come on, okay. All right, next example is for you to try. A study was conducted to see if the mean number of women working full-time jobs in country A is the same as the mean number of women working full-time jobs in country B. The results are given. The T value is given, negative 3.06757. P value is 0 0.006633. Does statistical evidence exist at alpha equals 0 0.05 to support the claim that the mean number of women is not the same in the two countries? So, can you tell me what the null and alternate would be? Okay. Yeah, so the null is mu one equals mu two. The alternate is mu1 not equal to mu2. So the t value is given and the p is given. So can you tell me what would you do with the p value? Would you need to divide it by 2 or not? Because the value given is the two-tailed p-value. So your alternate hypothesis is mu1 not equal to mu2. So what kind of a test is it? Yeah, it's a two-tailed test because mu1 is not equal to mu2. Only when you have a less than or greater than, we call that a one-tailed test. So because this is a two-tailed test and the p-value that's given is a two-tailed p-value, we don't have to divide it by two. So this is an unpaired test. Uh, the null is mu1 equals mu2. Alternate is mu1 not equal to mu2. It's a two-tailed test. So the p-value is 0 0.006. We compare that to alpha. So because it's less than alpha, we reject the null. So sufficient statistical evidence exists to support the claim that the mean number of women working full-time jobs in country A is different from country B.
I wish I knew why I did this. <laughs> okay. So the next is the two sample Z test for population proportions. So, so far we did the mean. Now it's going to be the proportions. So here are the steps. We set the null and alternate hypothesis. So here we will have P1 and P2. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible, but I don't know why it does this, and, and I don't know how to fix it. I wish I knew. Sometimes, you know, the slideshow would not work. Like, I would want the answers to come up later on, but the moment I click the next slide, the whole thing would just come up, and then, um, yeah. So, and then my students would know the answers right away. So, there's no point in me telling them, okay, you try it out, and then we'll discuss the answers. You think so? Uh, let me try that next time. Maybe. Maybe I should try something like that. All right. For our population proportions, we have P1 and P2 instead of mu1 and mu2. So, Null would be P1 equals P2. The alternate can be either less than, greater than, or not equal to. Then we note the significance level. We find the Z statistic. So Z statistic is P hat, P1 hat minus P2 hat minus 0 over square root of P hat times 1 minus P hat times 1 over N1 plus 1 over N2. So I'll tell you what P1 hat, P2 hat, and P hat are in a little bit when we do an example. So then we find the P value. We can combine these two steps uh, using the Python code proportions underscore Z test. That takes on the counts and N. Those are two arrays. So we'll be doing an example that will um, make use of uh, this Python code. So then we'll compare the P to alpha and then determine whether to reject or not reject the null and then make our conclusion. All right. The number of all electric or hybrid cars in, a, in city A is 350 out of a sample of 500. And the number of hybrid cars in city B is 400 in a sample of 600. Is there evidence to show that the number of hybrid car owners in city A is more than city B? Test at 0 0.05 level of significance. So here are the answers summarized. So for city A, the sample size is 50 and the number of hybrid cars is 350. For city B, the sample size is 600 and the number of hybrid cars is 400. So P1, let P1 be the proportion of hybrid cars in city A and P2 be the proportion of hybrid cars in city B. So my null hypothesis will be P1 equal to P2. So we're saying that there is no difference in the proportions. It's the same for both the cities. The alternate is P1 greater than P2. So here we have P1 hat, P2 hat, and P hat. So what are these? So P1 hat is the sample proportion for city A, or whatever is the first sample. So whenever you put the hat sign, it's usually for the sample. For the population, you will not have the hat sign. You can see in the null and alternate, I did not put the hat sign. But for a sample, you will have the hat over the uh, P. So P1 is the sample proportion 
for the first sample. And the way we calculate the proportion is the number of favorable outcomes over the sample size. So here we have 350 over 500. That's 0 0.7. So in a similar way, we calculate P2 hat, which is the sample proportion for the second. Can sample so 400 over 600 that's 0 0.667 then we have to do the p hat so the p hat is the combined proportion so you would add up all the favorable outcomes from both the samples and divide that by the total uh, sample size so we do 350 plus 400 over 500 plus 600. So we get 0 0.682. So this is a right tail test. And now we have to calculate the test statistic. So we plug in the values. P1 hat is 0 0.7. P2 hat is 0 0.667. Divide that by the square root of P hat, which is 0 0.682, times 1 minus P hat. So 1 minus 0 0.682 times 1 over N1 which is the sample 1 size, 500, plus 1 over N2, which is sample 2 uh, size. So my Z value comes out to be 1.182. Please try it out. You might get a slightly different value depending upon how many values you take after the decimal, but you will get something close to 1.1. Then you have to find the p-value. We do st.norm.sf, 1.182, 0, and 1. And the p-value that I got is 0 So P is 0 0.119 and alpha is 0 0.05. So P value is greater than alpha. So we do not reject the null. And the conclusion is that sufficient evidence does not exist to prove that the proportion of hybrid cars in city A is more than the proportion of hybrid cars in city B. If you have any questions, please let me know. All right, we can do the same problem by combining the two steps where we find the test statistic and the p-value. If we combine those two steps and just use the Python code, we can get the st test statistic and the p-value. So here is the same table. And here is the Python code. So from stats models dot stats dot 
proportion. We import proportions underscore z test. Counts is a variable that's equal. It's um, an array that has two values, 350 and 400. These are the favorable outcomes. N is another array that has the sample sizes. So for the first one is 500, second sample size is 600. So we group them together. And if we do print proportions underscore z test, that takes counts and n. We will get two values. The first value is the test statistic. And the second is the two-tailed p-value. So because this is a one-tailed test, we have to divide the p-value by 2. So when we divide it by 2, we get 0 0.119. So these answers are um, same as what we got when you use the formula for the Z statistic and then the Python code for finding the P. So we combine those two steps into one by using just proportions underscore Z test. Any questions? Okay. I think that's all I had for tonight. If any of you have any questions, I will be happy to take your questions now. You can reach me at stemcoach at snhu.edu. Feel free to schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with me.